Our next speaker is Dr. Xu Mei Hong. She is an associate scientist in the Department of Population, Family, and Reproductive Health at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Dr. Hong investigates lifestyle, genetic variants, epigenetic alterations, metabolomic profiles, and their interactions associated with complex childhood diseases. She has multiple research interests, and I think you will hear about them in her presentation today. Genetics, epigenomics, metabolomics, multiomics, DNA methylation, gene environment interaction, child health, food allergy, asthma, and preterm birth. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Hong. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for this great opportunity. I'm honored to be here. Today, my talk is focus on omics in child health, as well as the integration of omics with environmental exposure, including social determinant of health. First, I would like to provide a brief overview on the omics studies then I will share with you two examples of our team's research about integration of omics with environmental exposure, including social determinant of health. Finally, I will provide some conclusion and the future perspective. Before we go to omics, I would like to strengthen that the etiology of most child disease is actually complicated. It's involved environmental exposure, lifestyle, and biology, biological factors, as well as their interactions. Previous studies have put a lot of effort on environments and the lifestyle, and they have made some significant breakthrough in improving child health. In particular, an increasing number of studies have demonstrated that social determinant of health have played an important role in child health, although the underlying mechanism is largely unknown. With the advancements of biological technology, we anticipate that the integration of biology with environment and the lifestyle have the potential to capture the complete complexity of a disease. Here, the omics refer to a field of study in biology and the omics. Omics study included multiple layers starting from DNA, RNA, proteins, and the met metabolites, such as genomics, epigenomics, transcriptomics, proteomics, and the metabolomics. The genomics is relatively mature in the omics field. It aims to identify genetic variants associated with a phenotype or a trait, such as genome-wide association study, which you may be already familiar, as well as the whole genome sequence, which has the potential to identify real variants and the structural variants, which cannot be captured by GWAS. Epigenomics focuses on genome-wide characterization of reversible modification of DNA or DNA-related protein such as DNA methylation and histone modifications. And the DNA methylation is among the most studied category. We know the, the genome is actually stable across the knife, while the epigenome is dynamic and uh, modifiable in response to intra and extracellular stimuli. The transcriptomics is examining RNA levels genome-wide, such as RNA-6 studies. Proteomics is the large-scale study of a protein, including their structure and their functions within a cell or organism. <coughs> Metabolomics is to quantify multiple small man man molecules in the cell or organism, such as amino acid, fatty acid, and the carb carbohydrates. Metabolon is the most closely to a phenotype or a disease we are interested. So it has a potential to identify um, predictive biomarkers and uh, di diagnostic biomarkers for a trait. All this 
multi-omics are actually interconnected and interactively affect biological function, growth, and disease developments. The role of omic study have also been strengthened by the initiation of the All of Us program. This program is uh, to co collect and study data from one million or more people live in the U.S. And the goal of this program is to better health for all of us. One important piece of this program is to obtain biospecific from participants to map their omics uh, profile and to create a giant database for scientific discovery. As a molecular epidemiologist, I'm pretty interested in integrating omics data with environmental exposure, including social determinant of health, to identify risk factor and the pathway associated with child disease. So today I would like to share with two examples on how we integrate omics with social determinants or other environmental exposures to study child disease. The framework of this work is summarized here. So we propose that uh, environmental exposure, such as <clears throat> including social determinant of health, can interact with genetic background to affect future risk of a child disease. And then by integrating multi-omics data, such as epigenomic, proteomic, and metabolomic data, we can get better understanding on how this interaction are uh, associated with child health. The first example I would like to share is our study on genome-wide G by stress interaction on preterm births. This study was conducted in the Boston birth cohorts. The cohort that consists of about 8,600 modern newborn pairs enrolled at the Boston Medical Center since 1998. And about 3,500 children has been followed since birth. And this is U.S. low-income multi-ethnic birth cohort, with 60% mothers are African Americans. And in this that in this cohort, each children's health status and disease diagnosis are available based on archived electronic medical records. We have also collected their environmental exposure based on maternal questionnaire interview. And we have also collected blood specimens such as maternal blood, core blood, and postnatal blood for omic study. Relevant to this study, about 1,800 mothers have available GWAS data, which are already archived in DBGAP. This table shows that compared to mothers of term births, mothers of spontaneous preterm births were more stressful during lifetime and during pregnancy. But based on our literature review, we understand that currently the association between stress and uh, the risk of spontaneous preterm birth is inconsistent across different studies. We propose that such inconsistency may be partly due to different genetic background. So we propose to integrates maternal GWAS data to perform g by stress interaction in this cohort. And the g by e interaction is summarized here using a Manhattan plot. In this plot, the xx represents the genomic location of each SNP from chromosome 1 to chromosome 23rd. And here, each dot represents one SNP. The yx represents minus log 10 transform the p-value for the interaction between a SNP and the maternal stress. And the dot line here represents the genome-wide significant, significant cutoff. Any dots higher than this dot line indicate that this SNP have significant interaction with maternal stress in affecting risk of preterm births. So here we identified one SNP in chromosome 9 located in PDPRD genes who have borderline significant interaction with stress on uh, spontaneous preterm births. 
we then focus on this uh, regions. We first use sleep imputation at this region, and we found that there's another sleep nearby which have more significant interaction with stress on spontaneous pregnant births. And this strip is located in the same gene, PDPRD. And this is a tear insertion, insertion dilation polymorphism. Then how this interaction effect looks like? We first classified all the mothers into two groups based on their genotype information. Mothers carrying two T insertion alleles, uh, we call as II genotype here. Uh, mothers carry at least one or two T deletion alleles, we call as ID or DD genotype here. And at, within each uh, group, we further classified the mother into three different subgroups based on their stress level, no average high. <coughs> then we have six groups in total here, where mothers carry RI genotype and have no stress as a reference. The y-axis is the odds ratio for spontaneous pregnant births at each group with, the ref with this dot as a reference group. We observe that in mothers carry the RI genotype, stress have a significantly increased association with risk of spontaneous pregnant births. However, if the mother carries the ID or DD genotype, we found that the association between stress and the risk of spontaneous pregnant births are reversed. So this plot clearly shows that the association between stress and the risk of spontaneous pregnant births is actually dependent on the genotype of the SNP. This study has been published last year. So you, although we are identified the G by stress interaction. The mechanism is unclear. We plan to pursue some follow-up study to understand the potential pathway. The first follow-up study is to incorporate DNA methylation data because we previously reported that maternal DNA methylation is altered in mothers with spontaneous pregnant births compared to mothers of term births as I show here in this Manhattan plot. And stress is also reported to affect the imagination level by other study. So it's worth to put, pursue that whether the imagination may mediate the effect of stress or stress by gene interaction on risk of spontaneous pregnant births. The second follow-up study is to incorporate maternal and called met metabolon because our previous study have shown that maternal metabolite is actually altered in mothers with spontaneous pregnant births compared to mothers of term births. And we also noticed that some of this metabolite are significantly associated with maternal stress. So it's also worth to examine whether the identified interaction and the spontaneous pregnant births association will be modified or mediated by maternal or cold metabolites. The second example I would like to share with you is our study on DMA mediation effects which linking maternal smoking with birth weight. This study will also conduct in the Boston birth cohort. This study will conduct in 950 children from the Boston birth cohorts and with uh, DNA methylation data being measured in core blood DNA. So the framework is we first perform epigenome-wide association study to identify CFG sites whose methylation level is associated with maternal smoking, as I show here, the US study. The second step is to identify whether the smoking-related CFG site whose methylation level are also associated with newborn birth weight. If there's any safety size whose methylation level associated with both maternal smoking and newborn birth weight, 
we would further test whether this DMS emission level will mitigate the effect of smoking on newborn's birth weight. So for the first step, the U.S. study of maternal smoking was shown in the Manhattan plots. We actually identified about 38 safety sites whose methylation level are associated with maternal smoking. And among these 38 safety sites, about 16 uh, safety sites are located in the four genes which has already reported previously. Among the identified smoking associated safety sites, we found that eight safety sites in the GFI1 gene, AHRR gene, and CYP1A1 genes had significant association with newborn's birth weight after adjusting for multiple testing. Then uh, the last step is to perform mediation effects. We first perform in individual mediation effect for each of the three genes. And we identified that all these three genes' methylation level could um, par partially and independently mediate the effect of smoking on newborn's birth weight. And then we use the structural equation models to estimate the combined mediation effect of these three genes. We found that this three genes can explain about 68% of the smoking effect on birth weight. So this study clearly showed that demethylation may explain part of the <coughs> environmental exposure on uh, disease developments. As a summary, the study by us and others have suggested that gene by social determinant of health interaction should be considered in childhood studies and the underlying pathways can be explored by integrating different omics data sets. Our pre preliminary, yes, promising findings of a single omics and multi-omics study underscore the need to bring all pieces of puzzle together to get a better and a fuller understanding of the cause and underlying mechanism in childhood study. And I would like to highlight that Future studies are needed to incorporate multi-omics with large prospective birth cohorts so as to clarify temporal and uh, causal relationships. As I conclude my talk today, I would like to thank my colleague and uh, collaborator within and across Johns Hopkins. And our work was uh, supported by multiple institutes. I will stop here and thank your time and your participation.